Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Dividing Decimals Using Models. This is part one. A better title or another title might be Understanding What Decimal Division Really Means Using Pictures. So what we want to do in these lessons is really understand what we're doing when we divide one decimal by another decimal. We all kind of understand what regular division means, and we'll review that in just a second. But when we get to something like 1.6 divided by 1.4 or 3.2 divided by 2.7, we start to lose a little bit of the meaning of what it is. So for instance, the problems that we're going to be doing, doing in this lesson, in fact, the first problem that we will do will be something like this, 1.6 divided by uh, 0 0.4. And we'll talk about this exact problem as our first problem here, but we want to understand what does it mean to take 1.6 of something and divide it uh, by 0 0.4. Of course, we will learn how to calculate the answer, but we wanna know what we're doing. So before we really draw a picture of this, we want to go back and review regular division because when we understand what regular division is doing, then understanding the decimal division is very simple, okay? So what we're going to do, we're gonna put this on the back burner. We'll talk about this in just a minute. So instead of talking about that, I want to first talk about uh, a much simpler problem, the number six divided by two. Six divided by two. Now, I, I, we're going to use some pictures here in a second to understand this, but I think you all probably know what the answer to this is. Six divided by two is three. How do we know this? Because three times two is six. Another way of writing that would be something like we take six and we divide it by two. That's all we're doing here. Six divided by two, six divided by two. The answer is three. Why? Because two times three is six. You should multiply these numbers together and get what's underneath the division kind of symbol there because division and multiplication are opposites of each other. Really in math, we say that they're inverses of each other, but whatever, we can use the word opposites. They're basically opposites of each other. But even though we know the answer to this, let's review a little bit what it actually means, okay? So we're, taking, we're saying that we have six objects, right? This is uh, uh, the, uh, the number that we're dividing there is six objects. So we're gonna represent that by six objects. Now we can think of this division in two different ways and they both have their uses. So let's first talk about the first way. When we say six objects divided by two, one way of thinking about it is we take the six objects and we put it into two equal piles. We divide the number of objects into that many piles and let's see what happens. We have six objects. The only real way to make two equal size piles is to do something like this. Here's the first pile and here is the second pile, right? And so when we do division, what we're trying to do is make equal piles of things. And so that's what we have done. Notice what happens. We have two piles, but in each of those piles, we have three objects. That's why we say six divided in by two is equal to three because six objects divided into two equal piles means there are three objects in each pile. So that's the first way of thinking about it, and that's a good way of thinking about it, I like that. But there's another way of thinking about division that helps us a little bit more when we're talking about decimal division. So what we have is six objects, we're dividing by two. Instead of thinking about dividing it into two piles, I want you to think about this, okay? We have six objects, and we're going to divide it by two. Here is two objects. Here is six objects, six objects on the top, two objects on the bottom. So if you want, I can put like a little division symbol right here because we have six objects divided by two objects. So what we're trying to do when we divide by two objects, the other way of thinking about it is we want to see how many times we can fit two objects into our original amount. So what we're kind of doing is we're saying, look, we have six objects. We want to divide two objects and see how many times the two objects can fit in to the six objects. I'll say it one more time. How many times can the two objects fit into the six objects? So we're dividing by two means that we're dividing and seeing how many times these two objects can fit in here. Well, here's one time it can fit in here. Here's another time, number two times it can fit in there, and here's the third time it can fit in there. So six divided by two objects can fit three times because here I'm fitting it one time, here I'm fitting it the second time, here I'm fitting it the third time. So we can divide in three times. Now, this little picture of division is what I want you to have in your mind when we do decimal division because it's a little easier to think about. What we're dividing is the first number, what we're dividing by is we're just trying to see how many times it fits in there. In this case, it fits three times. So the answer is three. Now let's go and turn this idea to talking about decimal division. 
here we have the same problem, 1.6 divided by 0 0.4. The thing I want you to know is that decimal division, it really means the same thing as whole number division. The idea is the same. All we have to do is say, well, we have 1.6 of something and we're dividing it by 0.4. We wanna see how many times this 0.4 can fit into this, just like we, over here, we're trying to see how many times the two can fit in. One time, two times, three times. So it can go three uh, times there. Six divided by two is three. All right, um, so the first number, 1.6, how do we represent that? Well, on the board, we have this giant square here represents one whole. The one whole is we have it subdivided into 10 slices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But 10 out of 10 slices means we have one whole. So really this thing right here is just, I'll just say one whole. It means one whole thing, right? So if this thing is one whole thing, and then this thing is, of course, less than that. This is less than one whole. What do we think this is going to be? This is going to be uh, 0.6 because it's one-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, six-tenths. Notice that the width of this little rectangle represents a tenth. We have ten of those tenths right there, so that means the whole thing is right here. That's the one. And then the 0.6 is this. One-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, six-tenths. You see this is less than a whole. So this represents one whole. This part right, right over here represents 0 0.6. We put these guys together and we get 1.6. So this whole thing represents the number 1.6. This part represents one whole, and this part represents a little bit more than half, because remember, 0 0.5 is a half. So 0 0.6 would be a little bit more than half, and so we have one whole plus a little bit more than a half. Okay, now we're dividing it by this, which is a little smaller, four tenths. So you see we have the one, the two, the three, and the four here, all right? So this is four tenths. So again, if you were to extend this, you would have a hole over here, but we only have four tenths. If you were to extend this, you would have a hole. We only have six tenths. This actually is a hole. So it's 1.6 divided by less than half, 0 0.4. Now, in order to do the division, I guess I'll write over here, this re represents right here, 0 0.4. In order to do the division, all we need to do is just like before, six divided by two. We're dividing by two. How many times can two fit? There's one, there's two, there's three. The answer is three. So if this is the amount 1.6 and we're dividing by 0 0.4, how many times can this thing, this amount of a sandwich or whatever, can fit inside of what we're dividing uh, into, all right? And so what we want to do is shade that to get to the answer. So you see what we have here, we're dividing by four tenths, so we have four little rectangles. So let's shade it here. Here's one, here's four rectangles. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of like do a big shading like this. There's one, two, three, four. So here it fits one time. Let's switch colors. Here, it's gonna go two, three, four, to all the way to there. So here, is it fitting a second time? That second time goes to right there. Now, to get to the third time, notice we have two slices here and two more here, that would be the four. So really we have, for, to get to our third time that it fits in here, we have this, and then we have two rectangles on the other side. That's the third time that it can fit into there. And then the fourth time, we have four little rectangles on the end. Here's the fourth time right here. So if we start with 1.6 and we divide it by 0 0.4, how many times can this chunk of stuff fit in there? One time, two times, three times, four times. The answer is four. The answer is four. It's really important for you to watch this a few times so that you understand what's happening. The idea of dividing a decimal by another decimal confuses a lot of people, even confuses me sometimes. But you're doing the same thing that we do when we divide whole numbers. The number you start with is what you start with. When you divide by something, you're trying to see how many times can this thing equally fit in. In this case, it fit in three times. We're doing the same thing here. We represent the decimal as a large amount and we slice it up so that we can 
figure out exactly what 1.6 of something is. It's 10 out of 10, that's the one, and then the 0.6 is 6 out of 10 right there, and we divide, of course, by the 4 out of 10 right there. How many times can this fit? One, two, three, we had to kind of spread across there, and then four, it goes four times. All right, so that, all of that talking, was problem number one. All right, let's move on to problem number two. Now we have something less than one, 0 0.9, we're dividing it by 0 0.3, but the same concept applies. 0 0.9 of something just means you have less than a whole. If, if this piece of paper represents a whole thing, 0 0.9 is not quite the whole thing, but almost all of it, because of course, you go 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then you roll over to one. 0 0.5, of course, is just half of something. So when we say 0 0.9 of something, what we're really saying is you have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3, because this is the tenths place, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths. The entire object would be if you extend this rectangle out one more, then you would have one whole thing. But when we, when we have almost the whole thing, we have 9 tenths. And we're dividing it by 3 tenths. How many times can this fit into this? So all we have to do is count. This is three little rectangles, so we'll go to here. So there's the first time it goes in. It goes in one time right there. And then number two, again, three more rectangles. So there's number two, right? And then the third one is, of course, the final three. So we can just shade that one. And this is number three right here. So this amount of stuff can go in one, two, three. It can fit three times and it can fit three times. So this is how we use models. We have two more problems to do, but I want to point something out very important for you before we move on to the next couple of problems. Remember, when we did multiplying decimals, so here we're doing dividing decimals, but remember, when we did multiplying decimals, we basically said you can ignore the decimal point, and you can just do the math, and then at the end of the problem, we ignored the decimal completely, we just pretend it wasn't even there, and then at the end of the problem, we just moved our decimal into place. So really, the decimal point when we multiply decimals doesn't really matter until you get to the answer. All of the numbers are the same, the decimal point just gets placed in the answer. The same thing happens for division. What if you ignore the decimal? Then you would have 16, right? What if you ignore the decimal and the zero? You would have a four. What is 16 divided by four? Think about 16 divided by four it has to be four, right? Because four times four is 16. Notice the answer is four, all right? What about nine, ignore the decimal, divided by three, ignore the decimal. So ignore them, ignore them. What is nine divided by three? Nine divided by three is three. That's the answer. So they, they all worked out to be the exact same answer because these problems are a little simpler. Sometimes the decimal, uh, we'll have to move it in the right spot. But I'm trying to let you know that when you multiply decimals or divide decimals, you can kind of ignore the decimals and, and, and then calculate the answer and the numbers will be the same. Sometimes this, the decimal point will move around a little bit and when we get to the problems, I'll show you how to do that. For these, the answer that we get is actually exactly the same as if we just ignore the decimal. All right, so let's move on. Just for giggles, let's move on to um, problem number three and let's figure out what would happen if we just, uh, just kind of guess here. What about 1.2? Let's ignore the decimal. 0 0.4, ignore the decimal. So what if you had 1.2, which means 12, if you ignore the decimal, 12 divided by four, because you ignore the decimal and everything. What would you get? 12 divided by four is three, right? Because three times four is 12. So we know that our answer has to have a three in it, right? The decimal might move around a little bit, depending on, on as we get to the problems, I'll show you how to handle that, but the number three will be in the answer. What about this one? 1.5 divided by 0 0.3. Take away the decimal, you have 15. And take away this decimal and the zero, you have three. What's 15 divided by three? 15 divided by three is five. Why? Five times three is 15. So we know that a five has to be in the answer somewhere. We will move the decimal where it needs to go as we solve the problem. So now that you, I wanted to kind of mention that to you, let's use pictures to figure this out. Here we have 1.2, which is, this is one whole, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tenths means a whole. Point two is the two tenths right here. And we're dividing by four tenths, one, two, three, four out of ten. So all we need to do is figure out how many times this fits in. So it's four little columns here. Here's one, two, three, here's four. So I'll try to do it like this. Here is the first time that it fits in there. There's number one. 
Next time will be something like this, number two. So it fits two times, going all the way to there. Now for the third time, let's see what happens. Over here, we have two and two. So we can say that it fits right here and right here. These kind of go together to make the, the fourth tenth. So it fits one time, two times. These together make three times. The answer is three. The answer is three. What did we say the answer would be? If we ignore the decimals anyway, we get 12 divided by four is three. So I don't want you to think that you can just ignore the decimals and always get the answer. There, we will have more complicated problems where the decimal point may have to move around, but the number, the three, has to be in the answer because the decimal point comes later at the end of the problem. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. 1.5 divided by 0 0.3. This rectangle here represents one whole. It's 10 slices out of 10. And then this is another half. 0.5 is a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. So we have one whole plus another half of a sandwich. And we're dividing by 3 tenths, which is 0 0.3. How many times can this fit into here? Well, let's just shade it. We have three rectangles right here. Fits one time right here. There's one time. Uh, we have three more rectangles right here. That'll be number two. Okay, there's number two. Number three would be three more rectangles right here. Okay, there's three. So that fits three times. Number four, we're going to take one from here, one little rectangle from here, and two from over here. So that's going to be another one. That means it fits four times. And then finally, this will be the fifth time the last three. So the, this amount of a sandwich or whatever fits one, two, three, four, five. Goes five times. Five times. So I've been trying to draw it to something that you already understand, which is the division of whole numbers. We take six divided by two. It means we take six objects and we try to see how many times the two will fit in there. Fits once, fits twice, fits three times. Same thing is true with decimals. 1.6 divided by 0.4, it fits 1, 2, 3, 4 times. 0.9 divided by 3, this fits 1, 2, 3 times. 1.2 divided by 0.4, it fits 1, 2, 3 times. 1.5 divided by 0.3, it fits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So division of decimals, fundamentally, is the same thing as regular division that we've done. It's just a little harder for us to picture because we're not so good at picturing what decimals look like. But we're drawing these pictures to give us a little practice with that. So I'd like you to at least sketch these out yourself and see if you can understand why these work. And then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with understanding decimal division using pictures and models.